you know, after tomorrow, uh, that will be available on YouTube. In, on YouTube. And so um, we we do, we, we thank you for being with us. You know, I don't know about you, but there are times when I have been in combat. I have been waging war. And, and I believe that that is every Christian. There are times when we feel like the forces, the enemy forces have tried to infiltrate uh, our peace and our joy and our place where we, where we dwell, uh, our families, our finances, uh, our minds, uh, that the enemy forces have been all around us. But praise the name of Jesus because he is the one that gives us the victory. Amen. And victory is the goal. The goal of waging war is to be victorious. And I believe that he says in 2 um, uh, Corinthians 2.14, one of my favorite scriptures, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Now, I'm going to say that again. That was 2 Corinthians 2.14. If you need encouragement, I would, I would put that, I write it out, I type it out, and put it on my refrigerator so that every time you go to get some water or you go to get a piece of fruit or whatever, you see the word of God on your refrigerator. But that verse is 2 Corinthians 2.14 which says, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ, Jesus. in Christ Jesus, to be victorious, to be an overcomer in every situation. And I believe that as we wage war with the enemy forces, that victory is ours. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Praise the Lord for victory is mine. Hallelujah. You know, war is a place where life and death meet. And that's why it's so important to know about waging war. And I am a warrior. I am a warrior. And before this session is over with tonight, I'm going to be imparting that warrior spirit to anyone who wants to receive that warrior spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Hey, George, wonderful to see you tonight. God bless you. And, and Gwen has joined us. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. Now, I don't know if, if you have ever read, it's called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Zhu right here. It's both in English and in Chinese. It's called The Art of War. And it talks about different uh, components of warfare. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, tactics and strategies and um, how to distribute your resources. Uh, you know, many times uh, um, there are times when we uh, expend all of our resources and so therefore uh, waging war and I'm talking about spiritually you know we are uh, you know, it says be not weary and well doing but there's times when we can uh, a person can become weary in their in their thinking they become weary in their uh, praying before the Lord they become weary in studying the word of God and so we don't want to um, expend our resources so that we cannot be effective warriors. We are warriors. We war for the kingdom of God. And so war is a place where life and death meet. Right now, we are battling spiritually for um, there are several people uh, that have need of prayer and we've been asked to war for them. We've been asked to uh, bring forth those prayers of, of deliverance and, and healing and restoration. And um, 
there's there's a, a wonderful minister of God right now that we have worked with uh, for 25 years. And in fact, he was the first minister that was sent uh, by the, the uh, ministry that covers us, uh, which is Foundation Ministries out of Texas. This, this minister was sent to us when we were still in the uh, low income area ministering to those people and he was sent to minister with us and and to those people and right now he's fighting for his life because of covid and so we have been we have been in prayer and in battle in waging war uh for for him praise the name of jesus our our war is not with flesh and blood and, and some of these scriptures are, will be familiar to you, but I want you to think about them tonight and, and evaluate yourself to see if you're actually waging war. It says that our war is not with flesh and blood, but with powers and wickedness in high places. And that's Ephesians 6, 12. And so that's why it's a spiritual war. You know, uh, Sunday night, Brother Fred was saying that the, the flesh and the spirit are warring against one another. And so we are to walk in the spirit. And it says that if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So this is important. Now, I want you to think about five different things about waging war. And then we will go to the word of God and see what the word says about each one of these. Number one, it's a knowing. We have a knowing about how to war. And that's why I'm teaching this tonight. So that we will know. We will know what the word of God says. So a knowing is important in order to wage war. Number one, we have to know our enemy. We have to know how that enemy operates and how to stop that enemy. Number two, we need to know our weapons. Our weapons are powerful. And I'll get to that scripture in just a few moments. Number three, we need to know our identity and our position in Christ Jesus. If you go into a war, you need to know who you are. For instance, a private doesn't try to go and do what the general does. And a general doesn't come down to the private's level and try to, to go out in the field and do what the private would do. We have to know who we are in Christ Jesus. Number four, we have to know the plan of God. We have to know the plan. God is a planner. On the first day, he did this. On the second day, he did this. On the third day, he did that. So God has a plan. Before you begin to wage war in the spirit, you need to know the plan of God. And number five, the last one, is that you need to know the tactics and the strategy of the Lord. How's he going to get this done? You know, number four is we have to know his plan. What is his plan? And then number five is how are we going to accomplish that? How are we going to do it? And I think about, on number five, I think about the cross knowing the cross because the cross is the power unto salvation you know and when you think about that let, let me go over that again the power of salvation that's not just salvation from a hell a sinner's hell but that's salvation Whenever we need salvation, the cross represents our salvation. 
I love that. I know that I can be saved and delivered every single day because of what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jasmine. It's great to see you. It's great to see you. Thank you so much. We're waging war tonight. I am, I am a warrior. Hallelujah. So, number one, know your enemy. Number two, know your weapons. Number three, know your identity and your position in Christ Jesus. Number four, know the plan of God. And number five, know his strategy and his tactics. And we're going to think about the cross. The cross that is the power unto salvation. And that's for you today, as it was for you yesterday. And it's for you in the future. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm in Hebrews. That's Hebrews 13, 8. So um, I've got some new ones that have, that have uh, joined us. Uh, we're talking about waging war tonight because we are to be warriors for the Lord. And our goal in waging any war in the spirit is victory. We don't let up until we have the victory. Some people let go too quick. <clears throat> they stop praying too quick. They stop speaking the word too quick. They don't allow the Holy Spirit to move and manifest himself. And then they feel discouraged are defeated, but victory is our goal. Victory is our goal. When I go into prayer for someone and I'm in intercession, I don't let up until I receive a releasement in my spirit that, that is taken care of, that I don't need to pray anymore. And you'll receive that. The, the more you pray and the more you wage war, the, the better warrior you will become. Now, number one, we are going to know the enemy. The enemy. The enemy, we have three. The enemy is, is Satan himself or the devil and his demonic forces. And then we have the world and then we have our flesh. But we're not, that's not the message for tonight. The message is waging war. But the first one on the list is we have to know our enemies and we know what they're capable of. And in John 10, 10, it says that, that the thief comes or the, the Satan comes. Now here's his job right here to steal, to kill and to destroy. And that is to come and steal what's going on in your family, to steal your finances, uh, to kill uh, any, any type of peace or joy that you have, uh, to try to steal uh, the love that's been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit, our encouragement, anything that he can steal. And he likes to steal your destiny. Yes. Because yes. if he can keep you from fulfilling your destiny, we're on the earth to fulfill I mean, destiny. That's important. Second Corinthians 2.11 says that we are not ignorant of his devices. That means that we, we know our enemy. We know we're not ignorant of how Satan operates. We're not ignorant of what the world, the world will try to take you away from the Lord. If, if you have watched any commercials lately or any anything uh, on TV lately, uh, there, are, there are things on there that would lure you away from the presence of the Lord. So we have to guard our eyes, we have to guard our mouth, we have to guard our ears, we have to guard our hearts 
so that things are not taken from us. So we're not ignorant of his devices. Let, let me say that. On a commercial, I saw a commercial a few years ago, and I, I when watching it, it was about a car, about buying a new automobile. But but I thought that has nothing to do with the automobile. It's about seduction. Mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. all about seduction. And uh, it, it's the way that the commercials are, are set. It, it's it's not to sell the product. It's to get you caught in and to catch you mm, yeah, and right. trap you. Right. Well, that leads into my, my, my next knowing about the enemy. And that is, he is a great deceiver. He will deceive you. Deception is one of his number one weapons that he uses on uh, the church of God, on the body of Christ, on Christians, is to deceive them. And a, a way of deception is in the book of James, and that is to hear the word, but not to be a doer of the word. So once we hear the word, you're hearing the word tonight about waging war. Well, there's a reason for that because some of you are already in a warfare. He wants us to hear this message tonight. And so I thank you for being here. So deception is to be a do is to hear but not be a doer. And so what I, you know, after this session, I want you to consider waging war, waging war for your, your workplace, waging war for those that, that you know that need to have Jesus as their Savior and Lord, waging war for those who need deliverance, deliverance from many things. Not just drugs and alcohol, but there's many things out there that are destroying people's lives. Abuse is one of them. And so, Lord, we thank you for teaching us about waging war. So deception. We know the enemy. Another one is distraction to get our minds and our thinking on lots of other things other than what the Lord wants us to think on. Finally, brethren, think on these things. You know, we go to that scripture all the time and we, and we quote it out of our mouth, but are we really doing it? Are we really thinking on things that are lovely? Are we thinking on things that are good report? Are we thinking on things that are pure and, and, and holy? Uh, are we thinking on the Lord? And when we think on the Lord, then that is 90% of the battle is, 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 is there in our thinking. And so if the enemy can distract you and get you thinking about other things, then we lose power. We lose power. We lose substance. We lose the strength that we need to be a warrior. You know, you have to have strength of the Lord to be a warrior. Because there's lots of things out there that would try to come against you. Number two, we need to know our weapons. And it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, that our weapons are not carnal. It's not a baseball bat. It's not a machine gun. It's not a machete. Uh, it's not a samurai sword. It is, they are weapons of power. And they come from the Holy Spirit. So what are some of your weapons? Who can tell me what one of your weapons are? Come on. God's word. <laughs> God's word. Amen. The sword of the spirit. Thank you. Somebody else. Praise and worship. Prayer. Worshiping God. Praise and worship. Amen. Because we know that praise 
will steal the enemy. We'll make him be still. We'll push him back. Some of you just let the, the, the bugs crawl all over you. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. And also I'm seeing leeches. Leeches that attach themselves and they suck out the blood. They suck out your spirituality. They suck out your victory. So right now I destroy those things in Jesus' name. I speak those leeches gone. I speak those bugs gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But your weapons are, are not carnal. So we've got praise and worship. We've got the word of God or the sword of the spirit. What other weapons do we have? Do you know your weapons? Prayers. Yeah. Prayers, Amen. intercession. Yes. Amen. Woo! Amen. Good. Very good. What else? What other weapon do we have? Uh, thanksgiving and the joys. Amen. Yeah, joy. 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 Amen. 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 Because the joy says in Nehemiah 8 10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It will make you strong. And remember, a warrior has to be strong. It takes it takes strength and endurance uh, to go out on the battlefield and to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. What is another weapon? What about a helmet? In Ephesians chapter 6, it says that you have a helmet of salvation on. Why is that so important? Truth. The truth? The, the truth, yes, the truth is a weapon. But what does the helmet do? Protect us. It protects what? What does it protect? <laughs> oh, head. Think about it. Think about it. What, what does your helmet protect? It protects your mind. It protects your mind. It it covers that that helmet of salvation covers uh, your mind, and so that you can have a sound mind, and that you can uh, you're you're not going to get uh, confused. Uh, God is not the author of confusion, but He is the author of truth. And uh, who who said truth? Uh, as a as a weapon, Haley, Jean, uh, Jen, okay. Truth is so important to know the truth because the truth will set you free. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Okay. Now, Thanksgiving is a weapon because he yes. said, "Now give now thanks unto God who always causes us to triumph." Amen. So thanks. Amen. Causes us to triumph. Do you get up in the morning and you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I see, you know, I'm alive. I'm breathing. Oh, uh, you know, I can uh, get up and get dressed and eat my breakfast and go to work and, and be uh, productive today, whatever I'm doing. Hallelujah. So Thanksgiving is very important. You know, Jonah got swallowed up by a big fish because, number one, he was disobedient. But another thing, he wasn't thankful. He was not thankful. And it says when he paid his vows, when he paid his vows of thanksgiving, then the fish spit him up. His deliverance came. Woo! Glory. I don't want to be in the in the belly of a big fish. I want, I want to be. I want to be free. I want to be uh, that uh, warrior that is is uh, winning. Hallelujah. When I wage war, I want to win. You can ask Brother Fred. I love to win. Don't I, Brother Fred? I like to win. 
And it's the same in the spiritual realm. It's the same in the spiritual realm. And so number one, we need to know our enemy. And we talked about that. Number two, we need to know our weapons. All of our weapons are important. And all of our weapons are powerful through God. For what reason? For the pulling down of strongholds. And I want to talk about strongholds for a moment. I want us to think about what could be a stronghold in a person's life. What could be a stronghold? What is the first thing that comes to your thinking? What holds people back? Joy? I think that it um, hinders hinder our walk with the Lord. That maybe you cannot hear God's voice. You know, you worry a lot, or you you just see your circumstances and okay. maybe some bitterness, or, you know, unforgiveness, you know, things. Okay, okay, yes. definitely bitterness, unforgiveness, anger. All of those are strongholds. Definitely, uh, also hardening our hearts. Uh, when uh, when we hear the word of the Lord, remember Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And God kept saying, you know, he kept sending Moses and Aaron, you know, let my people go, let my people go. And, and so um, that those strongholds uh, that, you know, not not obeying the voice of the Lord is definitely a stronghold. Well, what about, no one has said fear. Fear, fear of the unknown, fear of what's going to happen tomorrow, fear of what the government's going to do, fear of what the, the, the uh, company that you work for is going to do. All kinds of fears, fear of something being in your body that, that doesn't need to be there, uh, fear of someone coming and and hurting you all kinds of fears so fear about what's going to go on in the economy is the right. economy going to go up or is it going to go down that's right fear and since brother fred brought that up it's important to know that as a believer you do not have to operate in this worldly economy now i can say that because my husband is an economist and George is an economist, but they don't have to operate in the world economy. They can operate in kingdom economy, God's economy. Praise the name of Jesus. And that's the really the, the whole message in our first book, walking in, um, what is it? The, walking in the Father's Riches. Yeah, walking in the Father's Riches. That book took seven years to, to write, uh, but our other books were a little quicker. Uh, but that, that whole uh, concept and principle, we need to understand. Bringing down strongholds. So we want to bring down uh, all those negative uh, emotions and those that take hold of us. Uh, did you know that even in medical research, and Lucy will be interested in this, in medical, in the in the medical field, they have proven that rheumatoid arthritis has a source in uh, fear and uh, and unforgiveness. There are there's um, many many illnesses are related to those negative emotions, such as. Um, not having a good self concept uh, and leads to, you know, depression and defeat, uh, discouragement. Um, and, and so they have linked, the medical field has linked uh, illnesses over here to those negative uh, strongholds that will try to come upon um, people in the body of Christ. You know, but we are not ignorant. We are not, we are becoming um, smart. That's, uh, that's the way I see this message tonight. That this message is for our benefit so that we will be smarter than the enemy. 
Praise the name of Jesus. And that we can be a step ahead of the evil forces in Jesus' name. For instance, if you have uh, young children around you, then are you, are you um, uh, acquainted with young children? Uh, please be aware uh, that uh, years ago, over 20 years ago, I saw, I had a vision. And in my vision, I saw the earth open up and these horrible looking creatures were coming out of the belly of the earth. And I said to the Lord, what, what is this that I'm seeing? And what the spirit spoke back to me was these are evil forces and demons that are being set free in the end times and they will attach themselves to the children. They will attach themselves to the children. And so these, you know, all these things that, that um, some children have to, to have to deal with, um, what is um, uh, attention deficit disorders, autism, um, any type of mental issue, uh, they're attaching themselves to the children. Well, why do we wage war? Why do we wage war to set people free? Hallelujah. Amen. To set people free and to set our families free, to set children free, to set the economy free. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, last night we were asked to pray for a five-year-old boy, a young five-year-old right. boy who had autism. Right. And, and, and we came against that because that is Amen. not of God. Amen. We are to bring what's in heaven on earth and, and and you don't find autism in heaven that's right that's right have a we have a sound mind amen amen uh the the children uh you know and the the strongholds uh your weapons are so powerful that they can bring down those strongholds so that you can live a victorious life and you can win Hallelujah. Number three, we have to know. Remember, all of this is knowing. We know, we know, we know. Number three is to know your identity in Christ Jesus and your position. Your position. If you're an intercessor, then you need to be praying. That is what, you know, your behavior needs to line up with your position. So you need to be doing what you're called to do. That's that's the bottom line right there. And if all of us would be doing that, then we would, like Brother Fred, you know, says, bring heaven to earth. Hallelujah. Number three, so we're going to find out who we are in Christ Jesus. We're going to begin to operate with, with in that position. And when we know our position, then we can then we can say the scripture, Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Hallelujah. Because when you know your position, there's a power and authority that goes with it. And when those connect, then you become a fire. Then you become a force, a force in the spiritual realm. And that's what I want you to be. I want you to be those powerful warriors that you know how to war. You know, some of you, um, and I had this word spoken over me several years ago that I had been. Uh, I knew how to use a gun, but that I was just shooting up in the air. I was just shooting everything. Everything I saw, every, every place, I was just shooting. But the word that came to me was that I was to be a sniper. I was to be a sniper. And a sniper is very strategic. That they don't just shoot in the air. They have a target that they're shooting. They have a target. And so that's what I want you to be. 
That's what I want you to be. And that's how I want you to use your power. Now, number four is that we are to know God's plan. And in Romans chapter four, it says that God, 417, I believe it is. God calls things that be not as though they were. He doesn't look at what is going on around you, but God speaks those things. He calls those things that be not as though they were. And so if you need income, you need to be calling forth that income. You need to be declaring and speaking over your finances. If you have something in your family that needs to be done, then you need to don't call out the problem, but call out the solution, the end result. That is knowing God's plan. God's plan is his word. The word of God is your guidebook. It is your handbook for living. You know, we might read, uh, you know, this one on the art uh, of war, you know, and it's a, it's a very good book. It's a very good book. And I don't know if any of you have read any of the books by Watchman Nee. Uh, Brother Fred, tell, tell me, tell us uh, one of those books. I, I'm, I'm, I think one of them something like uh, Mere Christianity living mere christianity there's one also that he has on being still and standing uh with the lord uh anyway he is um a, a very uh powerful uh minister of god and so we want to know god's plan and god's plan is his word and that's why it's so important for us to to study the word of God, to, if we, if we need healing in our body, then are you studying healing scriptures? You know, find all the, the places in the Bible where healing took place and read those scriptures and study those scriptures. If you need income or finances, then study about prosperity, study about what God says about giving and receiving. So it's, it's important because God's plan is his word and we need to know what he is saying so that we can speak out what he's saying that we can call those things that be not as though they were if we go back to the book of the beginnings in genesis chapter one it says that the earth was dark and void there was nothing there was nothing there and there's some places in, in your lives where there's an emptiness. I see an emptiness. And in Jesus' name, God is going to come and fill it. God is going to come and minister to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the earth was without form or void, and it was dark. And God said, God said, God began to speak. God began to declare, light be, and there was light. And you can do the same thing. Jesus said, you can do the same thing. He says, I have given you all power and authority. Hallelujah, to speak God's word. He didn't give us power and authority to do our own thing. To do what we think is best. He gave us power and authority to do what he says. And I think we have to remember that as we wage war. As we wage war. And then number five, the fifth one, is that we need to know his tactics and strategies that God has for us. And I said, let's think about the cross. Let's think about the cross because Jesus said the work is finished. Everything 
that you need in your life was paid for on the cross. Your sound mind was paid for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good eyesight was paid for on the cross. Strength in your body was paid for on the cross. Everything. And so when I think about the strategies of God and the tactics of God, I have to think about what Jesus did on the cross. The preaching of the cross is the power unto salvation. Now what it says? Right. Right. Hallelujah. And so if, if I have a pain in my body, I have to remind myself that Jesus paid for my healing. If I have a discouraging day, then I have to remember that Jesus paid the price so that I could be victorious and not defeated. Do you know, do you know where uh, depression comes from? And I have been depressed in deep depression. I know what I'm talking about. And this is not a lesson uh, to be, um, uh, I'm not making light <coughs> about any of, of what we're, what we're studying tonight. I know what depression feels like. I know what it's like to be in deep depression and think that there's no hope. And then I'm never going to get out of this big, dark hole. But God. But God threw me a rope, a lifeline. He began to speak to me about the spirit of God. He began to speak to me about his power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a strategy. You know, in 2 Chronicles 20, Jehoshaphat is surrounded by the enemy. And so he gathers the people together and they begin to fast and pray. And they begin to praise the Lord, like Joy said. And then the presence of God, the presence of God shows up in their, in their gathering. The presence of God shows up. And two of the prophets begin to prophesy. And they say, and I'm going to go over there and, and just uh, read that uh, quickly. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, you might want to read this chapter and, and just uh, think about uh, how the Lord uh, brings victory and his tactics and his strategy sometimes seems Foolish. It seems foolish to the to, to the natural man, but it's it's power in the spirit. In Second Chronicles twenty, they began to gather together and they begin to praise the Lord. They are they're fasting. Their eyes are upon the Lord, and then two prophets begin to speak up. You know, and I want to read you just a few things. Uh, we were in a prophetic meeting on Saturday about what is God saying to his people right now? What is he saying? And I wanted to, oh, Freddie, can you get it? Where right is over it? there. Okay. It flew away. Freddie's going to get it. Let's, be, let's go back to 2 Chronicles 20. The prophets began to speak and give the strategy and tactics of the Lord. How many of you know that the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy? And I and I definitely believe in prophetic uh, uh, utterances. I, I stand in the by the power of the Holy Spirit in the prophetic office. And so I definitely believe in prophecy. But the word of God will tell you also what to do. And so... These two prophets, this is what they said. Thus saith the Lord, I'm in verse 15. 
unto you. Be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go out against them before they come up by the, the cliff of Zin, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook. Behold the wilderness of Jeruel. Now listen to this, verse 17. Here is the strategy. Here are the tactics. Hallelujah. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. As you wage war, I want you to know that he is with you. 